In this lesson, we're going to talk about relations and functions and how to determine if a relation is a function. So first I have some vocabulary here for you. Um, so a relation is any set of ordered pairs or points. Um, this includes if I just give you ordered pairs or if you see something graphed on a coordinate grid um, because you could pull ordered pairs off of that graph or if I were to give you an equation with an input and output um, that can create a set of ordered pairs too. So all of those are relations. A function is a special type of relation. Um, it's a set of ordered pairs that for any input there's exactly one output. Okay. So sometimes a function might be given to you in an equation form and what that means is we have an input and when we plug something in for that we plug it in to the function we can then simplify it and get a value out of the function and so for it to be a function, anytime you are to plug something in, we only get one answer. Okay? Really what we're going to look for and what we call the normal person definition, it's not so mathy and technical, is you're going to look to make sure that your x values don't repeat and have different y values. Um, because if you look down here, x values are your input and y values are your output. Okay? Um, I did put the definition of ordered pair on here just in case you don't remember. Um, there's two parts to it. You've got your left or right movement, which is your x value, and then your up or down movement, which is your y value. And then don't forget that when we write the ordered pair, x or your input always goes first. So let's look at what this means. So here we have a table, and we are asked to determine if this relation is a function. So, first thing, this is our input, and this is our output, okay? X is input, Y is output. And so if you think about what that normal person definition was, um, it said that we can't have any X values that repeat. We can't have any input values that repeat with different output values. So I'm going to look at what my input values are right here. Do any of those values repeat? No. So do any of those x values have more than one output value? No. My input for 3 is 6. My input for negative 1 is 3. My input for 0 is 3. And my in output sorry, for 2 is 1. So even though these threes repeat, they're not attached to, I'm sorry, the input value doesn't repeat. So it doesn't matter that those output values repeat. This is still a function. And we can say that because no input has more than one output. And then of course, you know, you can put in there that your inputs are your x values and your outputs are your y values. Okay? So let's look at the other one. This other function, I see um, a little bit of repetition here, but again, we want to check our input against our output. Okay, sorry, my pen's not working. Um, so here's my input values. Do any of these input values repeat? No. So does each input have exactly one output? How many outputs are there for the input of three? Just one. How many inputs are there, I'm sorry, how many outputs are there for the input of 6? 
just one. Even those are, those are the same, it's still only one output for the one input. So those x values do not repeat. That's your first sign. If you look at it and you don't have any x values that repeat, it's a function. And it's for the same reason. There's no input that has more than one output. If you put that the x's don't repeat, I'm okay with that too. So let's look at it a different way. Here are three different sets of points. Okay. So let's figure out whether or not they're a function. So looking at this first set of points, what would be the input values? Remember that ordered pairs or set of points are always written with x comma y. x is your input and y is your output. So if I'm looking for my input values, that would be the 3, 5, 7, 9. Are any of those repeats? So is this a function? Yeah, this is a function for the same reasons we said before. Each input has exactly one output. Awesome, let's look at the next one. What are your inputs? In every point or every ordered pair, our input is 4. But how many outputs do I have for that input of 4? Well, I have an output of 0, an output of 6, an output of 1, and an output of negative 2. That's 4 outputs for one input value. That's kind of like saying if our function was this, just an example, if I plug in an input of 4, this time I'm going to get 7, but next time I'm going to get 8. I don't know how, but I do. That's not good math, right? That's not a function. This is not a function. Because those x values repeat, with different y values. Let's look at the last one. I see some repetition going on in the last one. So think about what are your inputs. Now even though those y values repeat every time, do we have any input values, any x values that repeat? No. So this is a function. Let's look at it a different way. In this one, there's two different ways you could do this. You could go through and write out all the ordered pairs. That would be fine. Then you could check all of your inputs. Or you could use the vertical line test. I like to use my pencil or my pen, whatever I'm using as a writing utensil as my vertical line. Um, but obviously, you can't see that. So I'm going to use just a line, okay? And I'm going to take that line and I'm going to sweep it across. And I'm going to check if at any point my line has more than one point on it. All the way through. The reason this works is because each of these vertical lines on your coordinate grid symbolize what your input would be. For example, this is an input of 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is an input of negative 5. Anywhere along that line, your x-coordinate would be negative 5. So this vertical line is just checking anywhere along that input. And as you can see, anywhere on this input, I don't have more than one point. Those points symbolize your outputs. And anywhere along here, I don't have more than one. So this is 
a function because we don't have any we don't have more than one output for any input. Let's try the second one. Same idea. Grab my line. And we're going to go check each input. One output, one output. But this time I have two points. So immediately that makes this not a function. And all it takes is one additional point on that line. As soon as I see that, it doesn't matter what the rest of the function or what the rest of the relation looks like. Okay? Um, we could also look at this one and know that it's not a function as well, but it only takes one. Um, so again, this is one input that has two outputs. So it's not a function. Let's look at it this way. First of all, one thing that I need you to know is anytime you see a line, a line is made up of an infinite number of points. So those are all points along the line. Okay? Even though there's not an actual dot, a line is made up of points. That's the only way you get a line. Okay? So I'm going to check. I'm going to bring up a line here. I like to make it a color so I can see it better. <clears throat> and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to sweep it across. So this picture here is only crossing my input once, all the way across. Even those those aren't dots. Remember, those are points. Okay. Now right here gets really tricky because Let's make this a little thinner for you. It looks like I have two points, right? I have one here and I have one here. But this one is an open circle, so it doesn't really count as a point. So I'm okay at that step right there. This input really still only has one output. But if I keep going, right here I have two closed points, so that is what makes this not a function. Okay, keep moving on to the next one. This is okay, this is okay. Here I have that open circle with a closed circle. Open with a closed. But remember, this one isn't really a point, so it's just this one. So how many, sorry, how many outputs do I have for this input right here? Just one. So I can keep checking, 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 checking. This looks like a function. I don't have any place where I have an input, my vertical line, that has more than one output of points. Let's try one more like that. Get my nice vertical line. And just move it across my graph. How many outputs do I have in this section right here? Just one for each input. How about right here? And would this be a function? Yes. There was no point on the graph where I had more than one output for my input, even right here. Because is this a point? Not really. How about over here? Look right here. I don't have any dots. But how many outputs do I have for that input? I have two. So is this a function? Nope. Awesome. Go ahead and move on and try your practice with identifying whether or not a relation is a function.